Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back to Ironclad RC. We've got the Horizon Harbor tugboat on the block. This is a Pro Boat's 30-inch rescue boat, okay? It comes with these uh, rescue arms. You unfold them to recovery fast electric flipped RC boats. Uh, today, we're going to be replacing an on-off switch, okay? Uh, greasing the boat up. I've, uh, we're going to be adding some weight to the stern of the boat to keep the prop in the water. When you are uh, you got the front of the boat loaded up, she may come out in the water a little bit. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. I'm going to show you how I waterproof the boat to keep water out of the boat. All right. And um, just walk you through some of the upgrades, some of the things I've done to keep the boat going. Uh, it's a workhorse, you guys. It's a freaking workhorse. I've had zero issues with the boat uh, mechanically. Okay. So she's sound it's a good boat uh if you guys purchase the boat through the channel helps the channel out link in the description so stick around stick around big b with ironclad rc So let's get to it, you guys. Let's get to it. Um, I'm not going to be pulling the whole boat apart. I'm not going to be pulling motors or speed controls or, uh, you know, quartz nozzles or propellers or anything like that today. Uh, but I am going to go over a few things I've done to help the boat, okay? Uh, first off, I want to say uh, thank you to Pro Boat for sending the boat to me. Uh, it's, it's actually been a freaking game changer uh, running these fast electric boats, okay? These fast boats, they flip. They flip. And this tugboat, it's been a hassle-free uh, addition to my fleet, okay? Um, so first off, I've actually added an FPV camera. This is a, a run cam, okay, uh, that I've actually mounted in the center wheelhouse window with the uh the antenna sticking out it uses these fpv red paul's goggles okay they actually come apart i can put them on a tripod or i can wear them for long distance rescues now this has well i hadn't even had to use them for a long distance rescue yet but i've used them you know just messing around at the park pond and and it actually works really good so if you're trying to amp up or if you uh run your boats in large bodies of water and uh you know it may be a good idea to think about getting one of these run cams uh, i'll try to put a link in the description and, and it's pretty simple to hook up you can run tap into your main voltage depending on which receiver you have for your run cam vxp i think or you can run a separate battery like i have i just run a little uh, 850 or 1300 milliamp 3s pack for the run cam and it, and it works great it works great uh the boat the boat actually runs on a 3s battery now uh i don't use any fancy 3s batteries for it uh, I use old batteries that um, I used to run in a pair, just say one of the batteries let, let loose on me, and I, I'll just stick the, the, the old pack in this boat, and it works fine with a 5050C. Okay, uh, the, the motor and the electronics, I've had no issues with. Uh, it comes with a, a, a rather basic remote, you know, um, the range for the remote's been great with a good set of batteries in it now if you do or ch choose to run a cheaper set of batteries in your remote the the range for this remote on this boat actually is cut down quite a bit so i would recommend running a high quality battery in your remote it definitely does make a dif difference okay um i had zero issues with this stock electronics thus far now i run this boat uh almost every other day in salt water brackish water i guess brackish water and i do get water in the boat there's actually freaking water in the in the boat right now uh if i get salt water in this boat every every day every time i use it in salt water i rinse the boat out i'll just spray the boat down with salt water inside drain it out from the back put it on my dehumidifier upside down and it dries it out pretty quick uh you could actually see a little bit of tarnish on the wires the winds on the motor right there uh so i will need to actually pull this motor out one day get, use some contact cleaner and clean the motor um man but but it's it's a really busy time of year for me right now now uh i need to grease it okay i haven't greased this boat in man i want to say a month i haven't greased this boat in a month you guys now i know you're supposed to grease your boat every outing or every other outing with a brush motor is not so important you know not as many high rpms uh this boat here actually the stuffing box the stuffing tube the way they have it designed you know 
coming out the boat right here it actually uh it actually it's actually watertight now um i've got a i've got a tube that i keep on this boat when i do grease it i use that tube i'll actually power the boat on i'll, I'll walk you through that in a minute i, I won't even explain it. i'll walk you through in just a few but um before we get into greasing the boat and how to get the whole stuff into greased um i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm going to walk you through what I've done to keep water out the boat to actually let me run this boat in salt water. Now, when I first got the boat, I did get water in the boat quite often. And um, it was my fault. Okay, it was my fault. I was picking the boat up from this, like, like just like this. Okay, I was picking it up like this. One day I picked it up. I heard a little, like, like a break. I heard a break. And I actually separated the deck from the the railing okay i separated and it was my fault i was picking it up with the, my thumb on the rail putting a lot of pressure on it and it was pulling the the rail away from the top side and bottom side of the boat um so what i've done what i've done to alleviate any leaks in this boat okay and, and it's kind of an eyesore but I, I don't really care it's a work boat to me it's not a show boat it's to get my boat so i don't lose an investment you know um i took ca super glue any super glue this isn't the kind i use but i'm just showing you for reference thin ca thin ca works really good and you just go around the outer edge of the deck okay where it meets up to the railing okay also uh right here this is where i initially had the leak before i broke it uh right here where the where the gunnel is okay uh it, there was a seam where they put the top side the bottom side you know the top side the bottom side and the railing it all all goes together i think it's like two or three pieces right there and it wasn't glued like perfectly from the factory now like i said i actually exacerbated the leak when i picked used to pick it up from its railing here and i broke it uh so like i said i put ca all the way around the gunnel all the way even where it wasn't cracked at i even put some right here okay and I, I believe Pro Boat has designed the boat so you could actually, when you get water in the boat, you could actually pick the boat up and drain the water out the back. This back hatch right here, uh, I noticed I was getting a lot of water in from here. Now, I think they designed it so you could pick it up and drain what water is in the boat out through this little crevice right here. Okay, so I took super glue and, see, and uh, baking powder filled in right here i guess you could see it right there i actually stood my boat up upright all right and i dropped slowly slowly dropped ca in this area right here you can see the white baking powder i put on it i dropped ca in right here i let it kind of seep into all the little nooks and crannies that thin and uh once i did the thin i used a medium ca back here inside the boat right there and i basically sealed up that purposely built in leak back here where you drain the boat out you right know here i filled all of that in so whenever i get a leak in this boat i actually have to flip the whole boat over when i get water and i have to flip the whole boat over to get it out now but i'm not getting water in the transom of the boat like i was I actually uh ca'd a, a little a little bead of ca all the way around this rubberized plastic piece right here that's where it was draining or water was entering the boat from right there so uh if you have this boat you're experiencing leaks or you broke your gunnel right here ca easy easy peasy even if it's not broken i recommend doing it even in the gunnels right here uh try to do a nice neat job but i actually think that the ca <laughs> gives it like a rustic look you know what i'm saying while we're going through the whole boat uh i might as well show you this i did this uh no real reason other than iron cladding the boat out i took some bacon powder and ca i built up around this rudder through hole okay the rudder is supported by the keel down here and it's got the through hole pin that goes to your servo rudder linkage okay i just took some baking powder and ca and souped up this through hole right here you guys can see where i built it up around it uh i don't think it's going to be needed but i just did it you know that's actually a, a quite a, a substantial size rudder quartz nozzle style rudder here and um you know if you get something sucked up in your propeller and uh you know or or 
you know, a big stick or whatever gets hung in this quartz nozzle and you're trying to steer the boat and, um, you know, it puts a lot of strain on these two pivot points, okay? So I was just trying to ironclad the boat out by uh, reinforcing a through hole because it is just a small piece of plastic. And if you guys have this boat, it's actually quite, it's not brittle, but it, things do break off, okay? Uh, like, like my my water jet you know that have these two water jets to come out the boat I actually you know putting the boat in and out of my car uh i broke one of the water jets off so um i'm not using the boat for for play it's a recovery boat it's a workhorse so i just uh i, I broke both of them off and um you know i ran my antenna in one hole there and i just used these fiberglass almost like an antenna just to give it like a little bit more scale look to kind of go with the boat so we're actually going to fix this today um i'm gonna cut a piece of plastic for my switch now i did upgrade my switch it had like a little small switch and um it, it had come desoldered which was simple enough i could have just soldered it right back on but i had these 12 volt switches right here and uh it's a little easier for me you know so we're actually going to mount this on a piece of plastic here in just a few uh, but before we do, let's go ahead and grease the boat up, okay? Uh, you guys know how I keep water out with the CA. I showed you my FPV. That's basically all I've done to the boat, all right? Everything else is stock other than the switch, okay? So um, let's grease it up, and then we'll mount that switch. So when I grease this boat, I grease it really, really good, okay? Uh, I usually put my battery in, and I plug my battery up. I turn the boat on, all right, with my remote on okay uh there's a grease fitting right right here on your stuffing tube all right i put a little tube on it and i keep this tube attached to the grease fitting all right whenever i grease it i use a syringe full of grease all right put it on my grease fitting and i trim the boat out so it's running while i grease it okay and the grease will push out any open areas, forward and aft. All right, so I'm gonna hold my my, my tube on while I, while I apply the grease, okay? And I'm just gonna push it, keep pressure on it for 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Let the grease work in through down the stuffing tube, okay, while the boat's running. All right, while that shaft's spinning, it's gonna push the grease forward and aft all right so i'm just going to keep pressure on it the whole time you can actually hear it you can hear it working itself into the system getting smoother and smoother all right so that should do it all right so i'm actually going to use some corrosion x here on the bushings on my motor all right, just a little zets of uh, corrosion X just to lube up those bushings. There's not bearings in this motor, so you definitely want to keep those bushings lubed up. Whether you use high-speed bearing oil, you know, 3-in-1 oil, corrosion X, just uh, a little zets of that. Corrosion X goes a long way on your motor bearings. Keep the corrosion X off of any plastics on the boat the whole boat's made of plastic so you don't want to go overboard with the corrosion x just get it in the motor bearings okay uh that's how i do it okay there's there's a bunch of different ways man you know but this boat it's been a workhorse i haven't had to do anything to the boat maintenance wise just grease it up while we're waiting on the soldering iron to heat up so we can change out the switch here I'm going to show you guys what I've done cosmetically and to make this boat a little more convenient to make rescues with. Now, I just leave my retrieval arms on the boat all the time. I, I use the boat for retrievals only. I mean, it's a scale boat. You could take this off and deck it out scale. Like I've used this throw ball line. I have a tree company. This is an old throw ball line we use to uh, access trees. We throw a, a, a throw ball in the trees and I pull my main climbing line up the tree with this heavy duty throw bolt line now i've used it uh like i said for scale look i've uh, coiled it up <clears throat> super glued it together so it you know looks scale um i've also used this line to 
secure my retrieval arms. I just fold my retrieval arms back. I'll wrap the line around my retrieval arms a couple times and boom she's ready to go okay so i don't have to take my retrieval arm secure rope off i just made it the perfect length to go from the aft cleat through the scupper to the forward cleat okay you unwrap your arms you could do it one-handed i'm holding my camera in the other hand one-handed boom two wraps perfect for two wraps goes from the rear cleat to the forward cleat you got your arms ready to go okay um I used a little halo, my son's halo guy here for uh, a scale look, you know, put some uh, micro cord on these little winch pulleys here, wrap some wire up just to kind of make it look scale. Um, I've also thought about adding an anchor. Now, will I ever do it? I don't know. Just an idea for you guys to have the time on hand to do something like this. Uh, you could possibly cut a little hole, a little scupper hole through the the bow okay the the pulpit here uh maybe run a cable or a winch line a winch something like this okay you could even possibly use this water pump power supply to um power the winch so you could do it remotely okay uh put your boat in the water anchor it up make you a little homemade anchor or even a weight or something uh anchor it up out in the pond in the lake in the river uh when you running your fe boats you need the boat pull anchor with the the third channel on your remote okay uh a lot of guys put the water pump in there this is an, an idea for you guys that want a uh a workhorse a boat that you can use and uh anchor up out in the pond put your little anchor with a winch inside or even a servo winch a servo winch would be even better you can run it from uh your bec you know um so yeah, so yeah, after you recovered your boat, you just fold your arms back up, okay? Take your your arm wrap, your your wrap it around twice, okay, and secure it to the aft cleat. Boom. Okay, ready to roll, ready to roll. I've seen guys uh use the same size cord on their stand, maybe even drill a hole in the stand right here and put a loop of rope on the stand on both sides so you can grab it and transport it that way just an idea for you guys so my, my my soldering iron should be heated up enough let's go ahead and desolder the switch and uh hopefully it'll fit in this hole hopefully it make it too big and then we'll super glue it boom 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 so hopefully i got you guys a good view here it's uh kind of an awkward awkward area to shoot but um i got my switch like i said it's just an upgraded 12 volt switch easy peasy all right i got my tend up here and let's uh, see if it fits in our switch mount just a piece of plastic I cut heavy duty plastic and yes it does fit all right that's cool and maybe I'll mark it on and off or whatnot here or there okay so um, go ahead and solder these on doesn't matter which one you go to just as long as that one's on one and one's on the other all right uh, now if you're out at the pond and for some odd reason you break or your 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 on off switch comes loose and one of your wires comes off and you got a rescue to make just bust the other wire loose okay if it come off your switch bust both of them loose and you can twist both of them up and get your boat going you got me uh just you know emergency type deal okay so I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Let's see. I got it soldered up. It's not pretty, but it works. Okay, we're gonna mount it up right there with some super glue. Hopefully it'll stay. And uh, I'm gonna make sure I have enough room to put my remote in the boat. Okay, so I slide my remote in top side first. Okay, and then I put the back in. So I'm gonna actually mount my switch right here so I have room to put my take my remote in and out okay i just uh put my battery over on the left side right there all right for transport and i, I keep my remote in the boat so i don't get it mixed up <laughs> i've actually gotten this remote mixed up with my recoil 2 remote you know what i'm saying they're they they look alike so i always keep it in my boat so i don't make that mistake again all right uh so i'm gonna get some super glue and mount the switch up right there 
I'm just going to use this foam safe uh, super glue. It's what I got on hand. Just going to put a little bit right here. A lot. Jeez. And we're going to hold it there. <laughs> now, I actually, when I first um, installed these switches right here, um, I didn't use, I didn't make a switch plate like this. I actually made one that I slid in and I had to super glue the switch on. <laughs> and when I did, I actually super glued three of these switches together, trying to get super glue on the outside edge so I can mount it. So uh, just a little tip for you guys not to super glue the switch. This thin CA, it, it'll get in every little nook and cranny. So <laughs> just a little tip for you guys. Don't make my mistake. All right, so I'm actually going to load this up make sure I can get my remote in all right it slides in perfect okay so uh, I'm gonna load it up with CA so it don't come off uh, the only thing with doing this the nice thing about the wood switch retainer that comes on the boat you can knock it and it'll break if I knock it with this uh, glued heavy-duty plastic I could crack the deck so keep that in mind when you're uh, mounting a switch up you know uh, I don't really care how it looks. I can get CA everywhere. It's a work boat to me. I do not care. As long as the boat works and it does what it's supposed to freaking do, let her dig. Let her freaking dig. I don't care what it looks like. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to let that cure up and uh, I'll let you guys go. Oh yeah, before I do, I put foam in my boat. Okay, I put foam up here and I got foam. Well... I took it out I had some foam back here this boat's heavy if she starts to go down you need foam in it you know you don't want to lose your rescue boat during a rescue so f fill it with foam okay it's not gonna hurt nothing uh, the more weight you put in the back of this boat um, I'm actually considering putting a couple uh, 12 ounce fishing leads in the back of this boat when I when I rescue some of my boats they get uh, caught up on this bar right here on the front and it actually weighs the front of the boat down i've had uh rescues that took 30 45 minutes to get my boat out to get my boat back because the boat was sitting on this front uh arm right here lifting the back of the boat up out of the water so i'm actually going to put some weight back here okay keep the back of the boat down in case we get an awkward recovery position all right so i've actually got a couple egg sinkers here this is a six and i think a four i think i'm going to put the six i think i'm going to put it right well shoot it won't fit but i was thinking about putting it like you see right here where this just behind the servo aft in the boat putting a a, a sinker right there either there or put put it right here for ballast you know uh like i said the hardest part about the recovery especially with bigger boats it's actually happened with my sonic wake that sonic wake fills up with water the flood chamber and uh if it gets caught on this front retrieval arm the propeller lifts up you know you got to keep that propeller in the water or the damn boat's not gonna go nowhere so if you're experiencing uh a slow retrieval Get you some egg sinkers, bank sinkers, or hell, even steel rods, stainless steel rods in the boat, aft of the boat will help. It sits right in there, you know, silicone one there and one right behind it. All right, that way when you go to drain your boat, it'll be locked in and secured. Now, another, another, you know, you could you can get these hatches off these ballast boxes. There's two ballast boxes, three, one, two, three. If you can get the hatches off these two ballast boxes here, you could add weight to this aft. But I'm going for actual like aft weight back. Try to keep the back of the boat in the water as much as I can. But I think there's going to be a fine line on how much weight you can put in the boat without submerging the water line, the, the top side and the bottom side. You know, you'll exacerbate any leaks that's in the hull by adding too much weight. So you'll actually have to put the boat in the water, load it up, you know, and see what works best for your boat. Just ideas for you guys. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was very informative for you. I hope you give you a couple ideas for your boat, you know, uh, repairs, maintenance, um, upgrades, you know, the FPV, the anchor idea. Uh, 
to to get to get the most out of the boat you know uh it's a nice piece it's a great boat that pro Bo's put out a great recovery boat i recommend it to any fe boater or or scale guys looking for a, a nice tugboat to deck out scale it's 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 a, it's an all-around fun little boat my son absolutely this is his favorite boat he's 12 years old now this is his favorite boat um so yeah i'll let you guys go man i'm gonna quit jacking my jaws i hope you guys enjoyed the video we'll see you guys next time big b with Anclay RC.